I'm not one who gets easily scared. That was a lie. Okay, I'm not one who gets scared from anime, which was the case until I watched Uzumaki. An anime originally adapted from Junji Ito's manga of the same name. Now Ito's works have been adapted in the past, but to a terrible level. That was the case until, of course, Adult Swim came along with Uzumaki and its brilliant first episode, highlighting all the things that made the original manga so disturbing. And then we have the rest of the episodes. And let me tell you, they, <laughs> they are something, okay? How did we go from this to this? From that to that? Like, it's impressive how the level of quality dropped so quickly, but it makes you wonder what the f*** happened. But for the uninitiated, here's what the story's about. In a place called Kurosucho lives Kiri Goshima, a high schooler living a fairly normal life in a fairly normal town. One day, she meets up with her boyfriend Shuichi Saito, who mentions how odd his father's been acting lately, obsessing over anything with a spiral which has trickled into a sense of unease in Shuichi, but it seems as if his keen intuition was right or along, as his father's obsession towards spirals turns disturbing to say the least seemingly starting a chain of unexplainable and grotesque events, both Kiri and Shuichi must navigate through these horrific events in order to avoid being consumed by the spiral that haunts their town. Uzumaki is a fantastic read and I highly recommend it to anyone who's feeling just a little bit freaky. But one thing I need to point out is that sometimes the story is just kind of mid. This is amplified by a thousand in the anime but even in the manga sometimes the ending to a segment would just happen so quickly. But of course the main appeal is the horrifying art, at least for me personally. And you know, the first episode of Uzumaki replicated that as perfectly as it could ever be. At the time it became the first horror anime to actually be horrifying. Not horrifyingly mid, but generally disturbing. And it's as good as a Junji Ito adaptation could be and ever will be. But just look at this iconic frame and then look at how it's adapted. Now that's pretty spooky! Like the whole first episode looks just incredible. So what kind of mean were they taking to make the rest of the series look so poopy? It's my campaign. The first thing you'll notice in episode 2 is how sluggish the animation looks now. All of their movements just look so slow. It just looks like they're aliens trying to imitate how humans move around. And I'm not talking about more intricate, complex movements, although it is odd how Kiri's spiral hairdo just doesn't move like it's been gelled to the max. But even basic movements are animated just so poorly. Like there's parts where they can't even get fucking walking awry. Or even when they're just talking to each other, they'll just have this awkward jitter as if they're going through drug withdrawals and it's just like when this dude grows a bunch of dragon dildos on him and when he goes to move or even turns it looks like a fucking powerpoint presentation. A favourite sequence of mine is when the couple are pursued by their respective families on the beach also oddly shit and then the next frame just shows them lightly jogging but the best part of this scene is this punch right here. The form! And look at the manga compared to the anime. They look like two completely different people. Why does he look like he's wearing a fucking podcast? Another masterpiece of a scene is when Yamaguchi tries to prove his love for Kiri. Ah, so romantical. But gets hit by a car. And if you couldn't tell how worried she is by this expression, maybe the most jagged running animation ever will. Who the fuck runs like that? It just looks uncanny in the worst way possible. Like, please just blink. <laughs> please just blink. Even more than the animation, that's the biggest sin this anime commits. The horrible attention to detail. Past episode 1 of course. Pretty much every scene either has no detail, or the detail that is there is just a bunch of fucking lines. Oh no. <gasps> White women, no! And yeah, to be fair, that's what a lot of a manga is as well. But come on, do I really have to defend this against this? <laughs> but it just feels exactly how other Ito adaptations feel, which is not scary. I mean, take literally any frame from the first episode and compare it to any of the other episodes, just looks like like completely different anime. The first episode was able to replicate the exact same vibe as the manga, that same dreariness still being present. But the rest of the show just feels so off. And is it just me? Or is the whole coloration past episode one just kind of off as well. It just looks so much grayer. Like not even like a good gray, like a fucking gray. 
<laughs> what? It's as if they were trying to compensate for the lack of detail, but instead it just made it look even shitter. And even the fucking character designs look nothing like the manga, nor a fucking anime. Some frames haven't even been properly fucking finished. Like, look at this shit! It literally looks exactly how Junji Ito Maniac would look if they turned it black and white. And that's the opposite of what everyone wanted and expected. Like, episode 1 proved that it was possible to animate Junji Ito manga, and the rest of the series just goes, oh, oh wait, I've just gotta, oh, 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 oh. Another thing the first episode did really well was the pacing. Now I say really well, but even the original manga's pacing felt a bit off at times. Just like how I mentioned before, the whole story would be fine, and then it just resolves itself in one page. But that's the manga's problem, not the anime's. But even so, the first episode managed to fit multiple characters into a 22 minute episode, with each chapter flowing very smoothly even when the stories overlapped each other. Nothing felt too rushed or forced to fit between one another, which made the story very cohesive and pretty easy to follow along to. Now take all of that praise, all of it, I want you to take all of that praise. You got it? And now erase it from your memory because the rest of the series does fucking none of that. For the rest of the series, chapters and stories will just randomly finish up like extremely quickly, which you know, the original manga did that as well. But then, in the anime, a new story or story from earlier would just come out of fucking nowhere because they gotta squeeze in everything as tight as they can so they don't lose more money on another episode. Like, how the fuck am I supposed to take this kid's death seriously and be scared when Kiri's hair is looking like that? It takes all the suspense out of the stories when immediately they're just overshadowed by another poorly imagined story, which leaves absolutely no room for the terror inflicted by Ito's original work. It's as if they assumed everyone would have ADHD or some shit. The best example of this is at the end of episode 3, where the dragon dildo guy gets absolutely murked by a log, with that being the end of the chapter in the manga. But then, in the anime, seconds after he's obliterated, Yamaguchi just comes out of fucking nowhere, just hopping around. Mind you, we hadn't heard or seen anything about Yamaguchi since the middle of episode 2, so why fit him in now, rather than finishing his chapter up in episode 2? Like I get it, they tried to squeeze this big fucking manga into just 4 episodes, but they skipped out on so much atmospheric content that would have added to the show. All the stories past episode 1 stop and start even worse than in the manga, because at least even the endings in the manga had some incredible illustrations, but here it just looks and feels so fucking boring. <laughs> Ugh, the fuck out of here! Like instead of mushing each story together to create some abomination, <laughs> yeah, suck that shit. What they could have done instead is just select the scariest or most iconic stories to include in the anime, or better yet, just extend the number of episodes to more than four. I'm sure having even five episodes would have made a massive difference. But even so, four episodes would have been perfectly fine as long as the entire series was like the first episode, which unfortunately wasn't. Again, episode one showed us that with hard work and dedication, Junji Ito stories could be properly adapted. So what the fuck happened with the rest of the series? Now it's pretty clear knowledge at this point that something went horribly wrong with the anime somewhere along its production. I mean, you don't go from this to this just because you felt like it. But even with its announcement back in 2019, they had more than four years to adapt the manga into four episodes. Although the anime experienced multiple delays and drawbacks along the way, including COVID, the executive producer Jason DeMarco stated in 2020 that COVID had no effect on its production. And considering that to be true, we can assume that they deeply underestimated how much time and effort it would take to adapt the manga properly, leading to its multiple delays over the next few years. But even so, they still had at least a year to work on each episode of the anime. So how the fuck does this still happen? Well, in a now deleted post on Blue Sky, Jason DeMarco stated, we knew this would happen. I can't talk about what went down, but we were screwed over. It makes sense people would be mad. Unfortunately, I can't tell them who to blame it on, but someone is definitely at fault here. A lot of people worked very hard on the show, and I didn't think the actions of just one or two people should be the reason it ever saw the light of day. Based on his words, it's likely that someone higher on the food chain than him opted to get it done cheaper than to create a masterpiece. This person being unnamed by Jason due to an obvious NDA. Despite that, the thing about his higher ups wanting to do it cheaper has so much evidence backing it. I mean, just look at the credits for episode 1 and episode 2. The director was completely changed in just one episode, and also the animation studio was changed as well, to a studio called Akatsuki. They've made such classics as... <laughs> fucking nothing! To be fair, Akatsuki is just a subcontracting studio, but for Uzumaki, they allegedly outsourced it to multiple other studios. Of course, this is just alleged, and it could just be a big scheme to cover up for others' laziness, but that is just a big far cry at this point, seeing as all the info presented to us seems pretty legit and makes 
a lot of sense. Seeing how much time, money and effort was needed to put into just one episode, it's highly likely that higher ups would have decided to outsource in order to get it done quicker and cheaper. And considering how all the promotional material was just the first episode, I can pretty easily see what happened. So please don't blame the animators or anyone that actually put time and effort into adapting this anime. Instead, blame the higher ups that look like Popo from JoJo's. Just remember what the staff were able to achieve through these numerous setbacks. Just like the anime's incredible first episode. All the major scares and scenes are all animated perfectly. It does everything a Junji Ito adaptation should do perfectly and all the staff should be commemorated for how good of a job they did in the creation of this episode. All the movements look really fluid and it really feels like the panels in the original manga came to life in such a horrifying way. Again, personally, everything about the first episode is great but what about the, the other episodes? Well, there's honestly not much good I can say about them. There are a couple of cool looking frames here and there, but still compared to the first episode, they're nothing impressive honestly. Apart from that, the only straight up good thing I liked about the other episodes is that the sound design is still pretty damn good in my opinion. It made me squeamish in certain moments and it definitely helped out a lot when the animation was lackluster. Oh, and the other episodes are also so bad they're funny at points. But apart from that, there's not much else good about those episodes. It's really a shame how terrible this show turned out to be. You know, literally everyone thought this was going to be an instant classic on its release, including me. And it almost was, in terms of horror anime at least. Oh, and <laughs> by the way, FUCK! Adult Swim. How the fuck am I supposed to watch the anime if I can't even get access to it? I'm a alien! So instead, I've been watching it on some sketchy website my VPN doesn't trust. Cheers for that, Adult Swim. But yeah, to sum up this video, first episode, good. Very good. Rest of the series, getting a thumbs down from me. Thanks for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. If you ever have any suggestions for an anime you'd like me to cover, just leave it in the comments below. And if you disagree with any of my opinions, <laughs> hit that like button. Thanks again, and I'll see all you guys in the next video. Cheers.